Speaking of, speaking of bisexual, Steven Crowder is in the news this week. <laughs> Wait, whoa! Uh, that, I really missed something then, didn't I? What's going on here? That was a good, that was a good did you, that, that was did a you good hear story. about, about, let me just say SAC. Have you heard about SAC, Binder? You mean the Screen Actors Guild? No. <laughs> SAC play. Uh, no, I have that. not. I'm Jack, out of the Steve Crowder loop here. Like, it sounds. No. Oh man, I'm enjoying that. Ben is going to find out about this right now. All right, so there's a story this week. Wait, I don't know what this uh, is either. I feel like I should know, but it's homophobic that I feel like I should know that. <laughs> Y'all will let me just say this one quote, like sure, yeah. that you tweeted out. I, I will, okay, I'm going to. Oh, find the one it. that I tweeted out. Yeah. <laughs> I will, I will allow you. Sack tap. Okay, but I'm, before. Just to quickly set it up, uh, former employees uh, left Steven Crowder's company, um, and this was after an NDA that they were asked to sign (laughs) that required them to, if they broke the NDA, it would cost them $100,000, which, you know, after he complained about the uh, Daily Wire contract, it's kind of rich coming from him. But in addition to that, yes, absolutely anti-free speech. speech. Mm. In Mm. addition to that, let me find, (laughs) here it is. (laughs) Uh, this happened. I'm going to bring so, it up once. So, yeah, um, when Emma saying gag order, Emma's referring to the NDAs that Steven Crowder would make his employees sign, right? If you worked for Steven Crowder, uh, you, you had to sign an NDA. And the more, more and more what's coming out about Steven Crowder is that he had this thing where he would kind of act out inappropriately with his employees a lot of times with male employees he's acting out on the feelings that being a right winger uh being a reactionary chud he's not allowed to acknowledge and and um it, it, you know it even made it worse just need to let emma know that on this show we start with the most important news first and it just goes downhill yes. from here this is so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes this is opening incredibly important right here all right, uh, here you go, Emma. You may read this. <clears throat> Don't read it. If you're not okay with guys... Yeah, you're right, Jules. Uh, he basically admitted it. ...playing sack tap, then this isn't the place for you, the source said Crowder told staff, <laughs> referring to the act of tapping one another person's genitals. Um, after the interrogation of current staffers, four employees wow. departed the company. The NDA was insane. Not a fun place to work. ...close to Crowder. Most employees were scared because of it. Some talked to lawyers about it because they were afraid, but thought they didn't si- that if they didn't sign, that they would incriminate themselves. He was intimidating. Steven's increasing justification of his workplace sexual behavior between men makes a lot of male employees uncomfortable. He always says it's joking, but it doesn't seem like a joke to anyone anymore. Do we have a question from chat? Yeah, you know, oh, when there are yeah. repeated instances of you putting your genitalia yeah. on your male employees, of you tapping your ma- uh, your employees' <laughs> genitals, of a requirement. you sending your employees' photos of your genitals, all of this being well-sourced by Mediaite, who has multiple sources on each of these stories, although I think the first one was from the New York Post, um, I, uh, right. But I'm forgetting the specifics of that earlier one. But these two what's, recent ones are, what's are the, from Mediaite. Yeah. What's the context for the that part where it says they thought that if they didn't sign that they would incriminate themselves? Oh, okay. So Mediaite, uh, I can't remember if they were the one that also revealed this story, but about four or five different staffers under you know anonymity came forward to talk about how the work environment with Stephen Crowder is him consistently like exposing his genitals. Ask- yeah. So that's the the you know in terms of like um, implicating yourself, right? If you don't sign the NDA, then like Steven Crowder's more likely to think that you're the uh, anonymous source. Asking other people for drugs and or supplying them with drugs, usually prescription like, uh, you know, uh, opiates and uh, amphetamines and stuff like that. Um, and obviously all the things you've already heard is in like making them go into very uncomfortable sexual situations and sketches. He's like, you know, let's own the libs by greasing you up with garlic butter and things like that. Um, when they came out, he apparently held a big meeting where he didn't want any more leaks. And so he's like, you got to sign this NDA. And now four four people have quit over this. Because they don't want to have to sign this. Like, oh, so they didn't sign. Okay, got up. it. Got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would probably leave too if I was suddenly asked to uh, sign an NDA uh, like that. Jeez. Well, usually the those are included at some of these media companies and they're maybe a little bit more buttoned up at the outset of their employment contract. But Stephen made it incredibly onerous with the 100K. So much so, like, I think a lot of lawyers would look at that and say, that's 
two well, I mean, I don't know what they're in Texas, so that might be different. Where are my cat ears? Uh, that's too onerous of a contract between employee and employer. But um, oh, there. But it is interesting because, like, you'd be surprised at how many media organizations, even ones that. Um, do we have a question from chat though? I think somebody redeemed. Ask a question. That, you know, uh, say they're on the left. Uh, use mm. NDAs to uh, make it so that their employees are unable to say bad things about them in the press. And uh, or, Jimmy Dore. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like and even bigger places, too. It's it's so standard practice at at media organizations, you know, where you're supposed to be in search of the truth. Um, I, I, I would like love to see a conversation between Sam and like my uh, other colleagues where he would try to get us to sign an NDA. It would be laughable. I mean, it's just I think it's pretty. I, it shows a little a lack of respect for your employees, but that is par for the course with Crowder, who is harassing them and doing so in this deeply like repressed way that we've always speculated about, obviously, um, because of how virulently homophobic he is. But he seems to always be finding a way to either show his genitals to a man or touch another man's genitals. And to be honest, like, I don't think it's unfair to point that out at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also don't think an NDA would would cover that right like you can't an nda does not cover illegal activity if if you are being right. essentially groped like if, if your genitals are being touched at work against your will like i don't yeah. think the nda would cover that so well, even for all still, we know the for all we know the sack tapping over at the lateral crater is the secret sauce that makes the show so popular <laughs> so we can't let that out of the <laughs> We can't let the other well, now that's funny they say is it makes the show so popular because one of the other things and maybe they'll get into this about crowder is that um his numbers have been massively flagging right maybe this started with the the situation where you know he was on that ring cam uh being really aggressive with his pregnant wife and and want to make sure that i'm saying this allegedly right but allegedly abusive right you know that that was the like, key he, he got a lot of views right while that was happening right um then candace owens uh, went after him he had a conflict with the daily wire right what that happens when when you have a when when somebody has a conflict with an audience that they have crossover with and there's definitely a crossover between um steven crowder's mug club and the daily wire people is that you know people are going to pick sides and enough people were picking the daily wire side that that cost him some numbers and uh you know there's also the fact that he went over to rumble sometimes like rumble will post numbers that look good youtube at let's say, has been through the ringer with advertisers enough where there's a certain degree of confidence that the numbers that somebody shows on YouTube are real numbers. Rumble, it's not so clear. It's not so clear if those numbers are, are real at all. There's also like a weird little thing that happens where it seems like um, the numbers maybe get inflated when somebody first goes over there to encourage them to make conflict content on on Rumble, but if you look at the graph of Steven's numbers, it's gone steadily down since the Daily Wire thing, since the Candace Owens thing, since the Ring Cam thing, and uh, you know it's it's looking like he's kind of in a free fall as far as uh, his his reach and his influence. The organizations know that if they all start Crowder sack gains tapping, power. <laughs> Crowder gains like power with every sack like, tap. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like crossing the burning sands over there, but like you know, to sit with Crowder and things like that. But I feel like when people hear NDA, they automatically think I can't say anything by law or whatever the case may be. So it already puts a fear in people. I remember working somewhere, can't say, but um, with a big, 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 big presence um, in this space and made me sign an NDA. And for about a year after that, because I was, I mean, if anybody knows me, I'm not one who, um, how Ole says, mints his words. So if I see something that's problematic, I'm going to call it out. You say that you're somebody who is for the left or whatever the case may be, or for the people, child. And I call it out because there was a certain incident. I didn't like it. And it was all in the media and I didn't like it. And I'm like, I'm working for this person. So I called it out. Honey, after I left, um, he was like, you, you know, you sign an NDA, you can't, you can't say anything, you can't do anything. 
So I went to go talk to some some legal colleagues and they were like, girl, no, you can. There were things that were done that you can actually have a conversation about. Yeah, a lot so of I times, had a conversation about it. But what's scary is when these people are in these spaces and they have a lot of power. A lot of times uh, NDAs or, or even any sort of like, you know, thing where you sign away your rights. Sometimes they'll put stuff in there that just like you can't actually give up that right, but you, you'll you think that you can and you'll think that you don't have anywhere to go. And until you talk to a lawyer, you, you really don't know if it's safe or not. Most people don't really have the resources to be able to um, contact somebody like that and find out what they can do. You talk about it, but you're just literally probably like a small fry to a giant. And so sometimes it's like they'll blacklist you or they'll make sure that people don't work with you or stuff they'll, they'll put fear in you in a way but that's what that nda is for to pr like to protect themselves put fear in you and um, if you do say something they know people that you may not know and will kind of like scare you so and hold yeah. your job and stuff but yeah it's, but that's the thing that happens <laughs> it's predatory because a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. if the nda that they signed is even enforceable because it might not be legally enforceable but how are mm -hmm. you supposed to know as the lay person uh, and funny story i don't know if david remembers this but a couple of years ago there was going to be this formation of this progressive news network um and they me and david oh, were yeah. part of this and they wanted us what to sign ndas <laughs> me and david both talked about, about this and we're like Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We you were like, no, that's not, no, I'm not doing yeah. this. <laughs> that was like a non-starter for what? us. There was going to be- I forgot about that completely. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember what the name of it was, but there was going to be this massive progressive network with a bunch of big content creators. And at the start, they wanted us to sign NDAs. We refused. Most of us refused. And then they ended up factionalizing and forming two different organizations. And then one of them just kind of like, and then the other started and then like died. So uh, yeah, they, it's a good thing we didn't sign the nowhere. NDA. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so curious now. What you yeah, so am I. Look, I was like, too. I think I'm I know, but I don't I'm know like, if I know. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> But no. Um, so, <laughs> so it was, it was people from the bunny campaign, pretty... basically. Right? Like it was, it was, it was? one of... One of the uh, people that worked within Bernie that did media or something in Bernie's campaign, yeah, their, their husband right. yeah, was yeah. a CEO of a media company. Yeah, lawyers are expensive. Legal proceedings are, you know, they take they take money, they take time. A lot of people, a lot of people can't really go there, so they never find out that the NDAs that they're signing aren't actually binding. Putting like a distribution center that wanted to get this network on uh, Hulu and all these different networks and stuff like that. A lot of promises, um, that's for sure. Lots of promises. It sounded really great. Um, but that NDA, I don't give a fuck what you're offering me. Not going to sign it. So, wow. yeah, yeah. yeah, these are very, very bad, very predatory. Uh, but I have to I have to go back to the the Crowder thing, because he, like I know people are going there's this whole groomer narrative currently. And yes, he is bisexual, obviously, likely also suffers from gender dysphoria. Uh, but this is not an LGBTQ thing, I promise you. Um, he does not represent all bisexual guys. If somebody in the workplace tried to do a sack tap on me, I would fucking slap them because that's just, that's such out of my personal a space. Right. Ooh. It's such a it's violation. A harassment. Yeah, no. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's completely do unacceptable. So, or, or well, he's their, or, like, he's, right. he's their boss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to say that, like, apparently he's their boss. And as people in their chat are mentioning, he's armed. This, this, I mean, you, you've seen Crowder before. Like, he, he's got usually his piece on the desk or or holstered right so yeah a lot of the people that go to work for him not all but um you see this with someone like tim pool as well they bring in people who are fans um and who might be younger who are susceptible to accepting lower wages and accepting this kind of treatment that is like the predatory element of course mike that you're talking about right there and people who are in media who are Mm -hmm. don't have principles like those guys mm -hmm. i mean they get off on the power they get off that's yeah. part, that's mostly mm -hmm. why they're in this industry is like crowder is overcompensating for years and years of like feeling a certain way about himself um whether he when he was a child actor i hate to psychoanalyze him but actually i don't because it's mm -hmm. fun and he's a terrible guy and and he wants to he wants to exert control and power whether it's in his marriage, whether it's, which is now uh, over, whether it's in uh, his his workplace or whether it's over his audience. Like that is the kind of person that's attracted to being this, this kind of figure on the right, um, especially when he's doing things like 
I mean, the dude reenacted the George Floyd murder as like a comedy right. sketch. He is a terrible human being. Um, and, and the only reason I think it's just I, I'm pointing out the internalized homophobia element, Mike, and I'm, you can uh, uh, disagree with me if you want. But I just think it's it's uh, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts, but it, it's just notable just given how virulently transphobic and, and homophobic he is, that there is this mm -hmm. almost like frenetic um a frantic desire to go as far ahead of those kinds of things as possible mm. while also dressing yeah. up and it's just a sketch it's right. what's really interesting about him is that he's obviously been at the front lines for a long time of the people saying that all drag queens are groomers all trans people are pedophiles all gay people are pedophiles and yet some of his early sketches are him dressing in drag and one of his employees early sketches the two of the early sketches. early sketches still to this <laughs> the, day the dude's doing it well, yeah, that as well. But this one is so striking. Like, he would make out with someone who worked for him, and then there's video footage that he uploaded of that person stroking the outside of his genitalia while there are children present, oh right? Like, there's lots of kids you can spot in the audience. That's the exact activity that he says is, like, this is pedophiles. This is grooming, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. one for one. I mean, the way that he expresses his internalized homophobia is the way that I did the same thing when I was, like, 14. And then, yeah. you know, I got a little bit older, like 16, 17, and I'm like, okay, I think that this is one of those doubt protests too much situations. I'm being a little bit obvious, not that I had like come out to myself and I'm like, oh, they're never going to know. But it's just like, you know, you kind of like, you try to double down and be like, no, I'm straight, grr. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he just, he's just, yeah, I, I think that maybe he thinks that if he's just cool with like, you know, the casual, uh, you know, grabbing men's genitals who he works with that'll throw off the scent because he just is so comfortable with the sexuality he doesn't care when it's like brother look at the photographs no. of you in drag like you're you're like you love it you're sashaying you're, around you're happy, you, like, you're happy. You, you feel comfortable it feels like his energy has to go somewhere like it feels like that mm. energy has to go some and so he's gonna yeah. act like a 12 year old boy with repressed sexual yeah. And, it's in the people who yeah. who abuse okay. power often yeah. um and have these hidden desires and things like that they're going to be like you said predatory on, in the where they're working they're going to abuse those people in any way shape or form and those repressed desires those things that he's been keeping in him and denouncing um you know to stay true to his side of things, um, the people who are working for the, for these people are going to get abused, and they're going to think. And imagine if I lose this job, if I lose this, or what? He, they put fear in those people, so they'll take it. They'll do these things um, just to keep their job, or just to make sure that they're good. Their relationship with their boss is good because they don't want any issues. There's a fear there, and these people always abuse power. You can look at them and see that he's that kind of person and they keep him in the mm -hmm. space for so long so it's almost like that's just that's just how he is i bet you that's how people are talking. that's just how he is that's just that's just it and that's also problematic mm -hmm. too yeah, that's a sense of humor. That's just his personality. He doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. by it. He's not trying to make you uncomfortable. Like yeah. all this, all these things to make like, it seem better. And to like when people just basically say that's part of the job dealing dealing with the boss. No, that's not part of the job. You shouldn't have to uh, deal with this, no matter what your, you know employment situation is sanitize it when in actuality like this is literally just like not just sexual harassment but sexual assault of your own employees yeah. which again the power dynamic makes it so yeah. much worse yeah putting mm -hmm. your balls on someone else's face doesn't matter like who they are you're sexually harassing them even if you're like yeah. oh this is just ball ball lick. it's a game we play as gentlemen you know just a couple good old boys slapping each other with their balls <laughs> oh yeah like, no you know like <laughs> yeah Sorry, bro it'd be and so funny if we like if we like licked each other's cocks, like oh, that'd be so funny. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, how, how, that, I like, thought we got explicit enough. Just a prank, bro. <laughs> yeah, just a prank. What? <laughs> what if we fucked really fast. LOL. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh. What if we own the libs by fucking each other? <laughs> They're gonna be so triggered. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I want to bring this up just to show you that this, whatever's going on with Chris, I mean, this is not benefiting him at all. I bet you he is kicking himself silly that he did not take that Daily Wire contract for $50 million. Because oh, yeah. yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Look at that drop off, right? And I'm trying to remember somebody said that this peak right here, it was another scandal. I don't remember which. Yeah, so if you look at like 
so he's got like he's doing kind of sporadic shows on Rumble here. That's why the lines are straight because he's doing like it's like there's one here in God. When is that? Uh, it looks like July. I can't tell. Actually, you know, I can't tell. Wait, let me. His support oh, has yeah. dropped considerably. Okay, one there in January, uh, maybe two in January, uh, or, or three, right? And then, like, not a lot more until sometime in April. And then he starts to do, uh, he starts to do it regularly, right? I think this is after he refused the, yeah, this must have been the Daily Wire situation, right? Where he accuses them of being big con and says that, they offered him a terrible contract and that's the like 50 million you know contract right um and that that's in april right and uh then you just see kind of like a drop off right he's got you know he's new to rumble he's got a controversy starts to drop off i think that this one I i'm gonna guess is the ring cam here you know, this must be like, right, but the the trend line and yes, uh, Thena, I do know what a trend is, right? In other words, what we're talking about is the like, uh, you could draw an imaginary line to show kind of like the average, you know, views over time, right, are, are, are like trending down, right? So um, this is, uh, this is literally Steven Crowder circling the drain. Mm -hmm. uh since he launched on rumble the spike is the divorce news and the, yeah and the video and yeah. you know i'm sure he's making enough money right because he's, he's still you know he still has his mug clubber the hell it is well rumble's so, paying him too coming in. and rumble yeah rumble's paying him on top of that so I, th that's fair uh, i'm not sure how much they're paying him so maybe they're paying him more than daily oh he got a contract with rumble i don't know but um he, his yeah, probably. I doubt that, but they're probably yeah. paying him a good amount of money. I mean, uh, it's certainly yeah. a disgusting amount. They're amount paying, that would make you yeah. revolted to see. I mean, it's pretty clear mm. though that it's not like this isn't like uh, not to you know take away the credit of the failing Louder with Crowder show from Steven Crowder, but I think this is also a broader thing for all of these uh, people looking for an alternative to YouTube should take a look at. This isn't like just unique to. Crowder, I'm going to make this. Uh, I don't have the data in front of me, but I'm going to make a very. Uh, uh, Matt is very good with numbers. I I'm sure this is correct. That um, you know, obviously, pull that pull that chart up again. Obviously, there was some um, interest in the lateral Crowder show when it went to Rumble. Um, then clearly there might have been a, an event or two that that gave it some uh, you know a, a I will peak tell viewership. You what those events were. Oh, so, please I mean, go ahead. The the first one I believe. Oh my is God! The uh, feud with Candace Owens. Oh, thank you for the raid, uh, Riemann. Okay. Mm. Right. Mm. The feud. And then I think that second spike is uh, after his divorce. Like. Yep, it is. After that video yep. came video, right. came out of of him trying to force his pregnant w uh, wife, who's like almost nine months pregnant with their twins, to uh, walk their dogs while he sat on his ass smoking a cigar and. Um, then also said that she had to feed the dogs their medicine, even though she worried it was toxic to her. Uh, as he said, that do your wifely duties. That's the kind of guy Stephen is. So and right. she couldn't yeah, leave the no, house. He literally said, "Make yourself someone worthy of a wife." Those were his words. It's like it's weird how he phrases this, and it's a little insight into that trad world, right? Um, I I sat through like. A discussion between Chud Logic and and Tom uh, Turkey Tom, where these dudes are like unironically using the word degenerate, right? Like that that's like a thing, right? And and like I mean, they're obviously they're you know they're they're very different ideologically than Crowder. Um, they're they're not as far right reactionary as uh as steven crowder is but like that whole side of things has got like a messed up perspective on um like like on marriage on on uh on sex on um on a lot of things right so they have one car for some reason even though he's a millionaire which is bizarre that is and a, you guys brought that, that to my that, attention that, last yeah. show about Dude, Red like flag, Sam, yeah. and that's crazy. I think that's and people praise the these type of people. That's the type of man. I mean, a man's man. Okay, and that's that's exactly what people 
that's what a lot of the people on the right and even I would say some people who are just really um, uh, people who are classic, they would think that this is the t like she needs to do her wifely duties. She's pregnant. There's nothing wrong with her. And that type of person. See, this person is dangerous. Not only are they mm -hmm. in dangerous in the workspace at home, like and these are the people that people are really paying to see. They are taking their word yeah, as they think, uh, yeah. Bible verses. Exactly, V. They think that making your wife miserable is a sign of a good marriage. Just putting it up on the wall, like praising these people. And it becomes very problematic and dangerous. It's very dangerous. I mean, right. It was a yeah. man's man. Mm -hmm. So my my broader thing about Rumble is like clearly it's not a de it's not it's it's destination viewing. You have to specifically go for that person and uh, that you want to see on Rumble. And obviously, it's very catered towards a very specific niche demographic. Um, you know, which is good for the platform, but obviously not good for individual creators because Rumble's, uh, uh, you know, able to pay all these people. So they're probably making money via all the usual Fox News gold <laughs> advertisers all flocking Look, to Rumble. To I, I don't know. I mean, like Matt probably knows more about this stuff than I am, uh, than I do. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Rumble at this point, considering the backers that it's got, it doesn't have to be making money, right? Kick does not have to be making money. Twitter's not making money, right? They can afford, you know, if you've got the kind of backers, if you've got people with like real like wealth, real money backing you, um, a lot of times they will operate at a loss in order to gain a market share that allows them to make profits down the road. I think that's the calculation, if I were to guess, that's being made. Uh, with rumble advertised there but i mean it's not the same as youtube or these other mainstream platforms where people are just used to being on and they get recommended videos and they'll just check them out like these guys really think and i'll use crowder as the example they really think they are i keep on missing the ad breaks and i don't warn people when they're coming i'm supposed to do much that much bigger than they actually are Doing obviously they are job. i hope you're doing a good job though in in uh in youtube chat making sure you that you hit that like button because that uh that means a lot to me that helps me out a bunch that is like the best thing that you can do it is more powerful than you realize it is overpowered right if you hit that like button um that is what brings my stream up in other people's recommendations so if you could do that that would uh mean a lot to me and uh you know if we could get in the habit like um i don't know if let let me look and I'm curious to see if Matt's chat does this because I know that the majority report um, they'll actually have people um, you know sometimes mods will will mention like how many likes there are and set little goals for for people just to encourage people because otherwise it's really easy to just forget to hit the like button it's a, it's a simple thing uh, it's really easy to do but it is overpowered it is more powerful than you can realize and a bigger than they should be and they make a lot of money but they also think likes, they're even nice. much bigger than that and because they they got big heads from their subscriber base and viewership mm -hmm. base on youtube not realizing that a lot of that comes from specifically algorithms recommending their content and not because anyone was specifically seeking out oh I, i'm a big crowder fan i want to check out his stuff yeah, and re reactionary content does better with those algorithms too, because the more outrageous oh, yeah. you are, just inherently it gets right. people to click. So they over. Yeah, yeah. Talking about the attention economy, talking about outrage marketing. We talked about that on Friday. It is very much a, uh, a bias towards right wing uh, thinking. And it makes me wonder uh, when we see a right wing bias, or, or really with, with Twitch, it's more like an anti left bias. I wonder how much that's behind that, right? I wonder like like how much how much of that comes from the fact that you can't really do I mean we did a little bit of outrage marketing. We definitely outraged Chud on Friday. We definitely outraged um some of Chud Nation. But uh it's not it's not quite the same, right? I I mean you're not gonna hear me say something as toxic as as what I, I literally can't say anything as toxic as the things that you'll hear from uh from Twitch poll. So yeah, that we got that we gotta fight the algorithm and one of the things that really helps that is is leaving those likes. Estimate their own importance just based on like the inflammatory nature of their subject matter. And then mm -hmm. they call, cry foul when they get uh deplatformed when they push it just a little bit too far by promoting hate speech and things like that. Um, when in fact, the entire time they were beneficiaries.
uh, of mm-hmm. that of of that that of that platform of that structure. Right. And when it doesn't work in their favor anymore, like their shtick gets old uh, on Twitter, uh, X now, for example, now they run to Musk. It's hilarious to see all these right wingers cry to Musk every other day. Uh, I'm looking at my analytics and, and meticulously pouring through tweet by tweet how many impressions each one get. And I'm noticing a slight downturn from the previous week. I think something's very wrong, Elon. I mean, in some ways, some of that outrage marketing may be... Like it may be like an unnatural boost for somebody that gets that gets old. Like that's my thought about outrage marketing is that is that it tends to get old. Like look at Matt Walsh, right? Look at how he's having to up the ante. Um, look at how he's trying to having to go more extreme uh, every every month, right? And you know he's basically run to the like you know, as far as he could on trans issues. Now he's, we're going to see in a second um, what he's doing in terms of uh, being racist on Maine. Um, on, you got to check this out. And he comes Where's running to them, paid? looking into this. Very concerning. I'm checking it out right now. Oh, uh, end wokeness who posts uh, race science <laughs> and uh, uh, skull measuring uh, <laughs> data. Uh, he got a thousand less impressions than the week before. Something must be terribly wrong. Must look into it. <laughs> Didn't you tweet out that Elon Musk followed some like overt racist after it came out that they yes. were super racist? Yeah, mm-hmm. Richard Heneni, or however you say his last name. Matt Leck corrected me out earlier uh, today. And I don't Jordan remember Court. what he said that was correct. Yeah, but, but the, yeah. first of all, this guy always has been tweeting out like really obvious like racist stuff. But I guess it never crossed into the, oh, this guy's actually like a regular on Daily Stormer specifically and other like white, clearly, openly, obviously white supremacist sites like that. Um, Christopher Mathias over at HuffPost was able to find that uh, this guy, Henenia, was writing for these white supremacist sites under a pseudonym just a few years ago. And Musk, days after this report comes out, and all these other tech moguls had to pretend to like be shocked. Musk just came out the a few days later and just openly followed the guy on Twitter. Like, oh, now I'm interested in more about what this guy has to say. (laughs) Not surprised. (laughs) Not surprised. Not at all. Not at all. But when you hear about the the claims of of bias, right? That like, I mean, I heard somebody that I kind of respect recently make the claim that that Twitter under Jack Dorsey had a left-wing bias and that Elon, what he's done is take that away. And they're talking about in terms of moderation, right? What they're saying is that people were getting banned or, or getting suspended or, you know, getting consequences for just expressing right-wing views. And it's, it's not true. It's not true. They're, they're getting banned for um, breaking the terms of service. And those terms of service aren't like, ideological unless you think that like you know like attacking people because of their identity is an ideological issue which like that's a scary thing and if you're calling it even on that if you're acting neutral on that and you're acting like well now now everything is good now everything is on an even kilter no it absolutely isn't there's never been a left-wing jack dorsey's not a left-wing guy i don't know who has to hear this right um musk is obsessed with fertility oh that's right that's right we didn't cover this uh there was an article in pink news recently Um, where Grimes was asked about Musk and a lot of other things. And, you know, the question came up, is Musk transphobic? Um, Grimes's take was that he's not. He's just concerned with fertility. But, I mean, that's a weird thing. That's a weird thing to be, like, concerned with strangers, uh, the fertility of strangers. they They do it out loud now it used to be like secret Mm -hmm. that's right elon's daughter is uh is trans it used to be like fake pages will follow dog whistles masks that's yeah (laughs) now everybody is out loud with the um with the racism with the slurs with everything like this is just how the people who had the literally elon musk twitter um tesla i mean really it, but, it really is just there, honestly. Like, I'm not saying like people aren't getting more open, but in terms of like the online platforms, like I haven't noticed any real difference anywhere else but on Twitter. Like, it really is just an Elon. Yeah, yeah. Probably like a, there's a racist aspect to that whole fert- fertility, um, you know, concern that he's showing. 
I can only imagine the gross shit he probably said to his daughter, right? Yeah. Musk, like, running rampant on his new shiny toy. Uh, yeah. There's been no changes on my YouTube algorithm. Like, it's still the same shitty stuff that YouTube has is, is let run, but it's no worse than it was before. Uh, same with, like, Facebook and wait, Instagram. Wait, worse than it was before what? They changed, uh, own the, they changed the CEO? And all the TikTok. Um, but specifically twitter and x maybe we notice it more because as being in media and being in politics unfortunately that's the platform um mm -hmm. that's really the place i've most noticed this it's just like rebecca was saying just open now no more dog whistles it's just like yeah they can be as open about it as possible you know what now they get paid for it they get paid for it the oh more gosh. outrageous and inflammatory and reactionary yeah. they are they are now getting paid for that and like like yeah, for a limited time only. I don't know. I don't I don't expect that Elon's like he's bleeding like funds on Twitter, right? And yes, he owns a ton of stock in um in uh in Tesla and uh and he own, you know, he owns SpaceX and and you know, he's got a lot of wealth, right? Um in, in general, right? And and all all that stuff, but um he, I don't think he can continue this this whole like paying the creators thing. What he's doing basically is this. If you have Twitter blue, if you have that check mark, right? And you get a certain amount of impressions. We're not talking about views. We're not talking about likes. We're not this is the important part. We're not talking about likes. We're talking about impressions, right? So in other words, if you get quote retweeted or or retweeted or you know somebody brings your um brings your tweet up as uh like look at this horrible tweet right you're getting paid for that and, and again it's it's absolutely geared towards uh maximum engagement uh maximum impressions right and that and that's what that's what you're getting paid for he can grift his way uh in and out of or out of any hole he digs himself into yeah i mean he's a well well i mean to a point right to a point that's true and it does feel like twitter is at least at this point more of an ideological project of his than anything else it's not he's not making money um at it he is keeping his name in the in the press so you know for a for a vain guy like elon musk maybe that's what it's you know worth to him I said earlier, yes, YouTube would promote reactionary content, but YouTube is sort of more strict about where ads can. Yeah, so back in the day, right, we're talking about like pre 2016, YouTube had a major problem. Like I said, um, algorithms maximize engagement, algorithms target themselves to keep users on the site more often. And it really what engagement kind of breaks down to is um a strong emotional reaction right and the easy what's the easiest strong emotional reaction to to engender in somebody outrage anger fear right all these kind of things right the, the, there's a negativity bias in order in other words towards the algorithm right and you would see like documentaries rehabilitating like the leader of Germany in the 1930s and 40s as like, maybe he wasn't such a bad guy after all, like documentaries that looked at this guy favorably, right? And you know who I'm talking about, like the the dude, right? The dude whose name I probably shouldn't say, uh, lest the algorithm look upon me unfavorably. But the reason that it does that, right? The reason the algorithm is, it, the, the reason they're kind of like, you know, quashing that stuff is before those, those, you know, bigoted um, YouTube videos were getting an unreal amount of views, an unreal amount of engagement. They were algorithmic catnip, essentially. And so there was a really, there was a very real concern of spreading radicalized reactionary stuff. And I'm like, how much of that is responsible for 2016? I don't know, it's hard to say right but it's it's like a non-zero number and when you look at things like the alternative influences report i i think there's really something to that in terms of not just the algorithm but the kind of network of of people doing content with other people where you know you've got like somebody like destiny who's um 
you know, talking to certain groups of people, but then those people are talking to other people and, and it kind of ends up like sending people down. This is when we talk about the rabbit holes. This is when we talk about the pipelines, right? This stuff is really, is very real. And, you know, it, it had a non insignificant effect on uh, politics, right? Um, I, I, I hesitate from saying that it was responsible for the election of Donald Trump, because there's a lot of stuff that was re that was responsible for the election of Donald Trump, not the least of which being Hillary Clinton's own horrible failed candidacy, right? There, there, I, I definitely don't want to support any theory which kind of like lets her um lets her get out of that because that was that was very much her own fault like i think losing to trump was a phenomenal uh, achievement in the negative um what's up canadian brunch Run? is everyone so paid, though because it kind of just seems like well, is everyone getting paid because it kind of oh, seems like a handful no, of accounts are really? bragging about getting paid all the time but it's just like oh, it's no. brian krasserstein and a bunch of like nazis are getting so paid. so apparently mm -hmm. i i haven't de delved into this yet because it happened uh, these past few days when i was gone but i was reading that no they... i mean like there's certain um requirements to be able to get paid one is that you've got to have a blue check right so you got to pay elon eleven dollars a month and that's a lot of what this paying you know this that's a lot of what um like paying people for their impressions is probably a way to sell the check mark um because a lot of people will think that yeah let me get the check mark i'll get the algorithm boost and then i'll get paid for my impressions you gotta have that you gotta have 500 uh followers and i don't remember how many you, you gotta have a hit a certain threshold for impressions adrian vixen thank you for activating my stand welcome to the stream How are you doing? Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, Streamer. Also, uh, welcome to uh, Bake Reem and Zeta. Thank you for the raid earlier. Thank you both for the raids. Um, good to, good to have you with us. Yeah, make sure to give both of these streamers a follow and uh, and check them out. So we're uh, we're in the middle of a uh, watch, little little watch of uh, the leftist mafia with emma viglin so you know pretty cool um and uh, i haven't watched this in a while just because like um mo most of what i watched it for was actually a limey and a limey uh left because of um some you know harassment that she experienced so it's kind of sad to see but i wanted to check back in and see how um how everybody on the leftist mafia was doing a uh, friend of the vod matt bender and uh emma viglin who, who we always love to see Yes, welcome Raiders, welcome. So uh, right now we're talking about Elon and his little subscriber pay plot, right? A uh, way to get more people to subscribe. Uh, theoretically, uh, they're giving away free money, right? If you're getting a certain amount of impressions, if you have a certain amount of subscribers, and uh, you know you can you can get some money uh, from Twitter. Uh, it doesn't seem like a good idea, and, and they're commenting that it feels like most of the people that are making money off of this deal are like right wingers. There's also the Krasensteins um, who are, are making some money too, um, but for the most part, it seems like right wingers. They sent out some more payments mm -hmm. to Twitter Blue subscribers, and um, you know these were smaller payments though, like Welcome, two, comrades. 300, 400 bucks. Um, not the tens of thousands of dollars you saw going to Musk's favorites a couple of weeks ago. So I don't know what the deal is there. I got to look more into it. But um, it does seem like the further right you are, uh, the more money you'll get paid on Twitter. That's because, always how it's going to yeah. be. If I were to flip. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't think this is sustainable. I really don't think this is I don't I don't think this is going to last. Right. Uh, I don't think that Elon can afford to give these payouts forever. I think it's going to be one of these things where you know, there's some money to be made uh, right now. And yeah, there's probably a right wing bias towards towards that whole um, that that whole um, impressions, you know, because that's what you're getting paid for on, on this uh, on this program. You're getting paid for impressions, not for views, not for likes, not for retweets, not for anything else that shows somebody like, you know, agrees with or, or likes your post. Just that somebody got the post, you know, shoved in front of their eyes. So and, and as we know about the algorithm and Elon's uh, Elon's tweaking of the algorithm to benefit uh, the cat turds of the world. Yeah, it's probably got a, a right wing bias in terms of that, too.
and become Candace Owens, I would get paid a lot. First of all, I'm black. Yeah. So, and then I speak right um, talking points. They would pay. Um, what's funny is when our algorithms, we do something exactly to the, the T of another show. Um, it was predominantly white. And for us on my other show um, that I do called Like It or Not, you know, we're all black. It does not, it won't, it doesn't hit for us. And we had somebody mm -hmm. come on who works with algorithms. Um, I think it was for YouTube. We had somebody come on like a year ago and he was talking about that purposely. It's just, it does, it's not the same if you look a certain kind of way, whether you're on the left or the right and you're talking about something. But if you are on the right specifically, and you could be saying the nastiest things, they'll work in your favor, like, um, and they'll pay you, like, it, they just will. I don't know what that is. I mean, you know how they say sex sells? That was old thing. Now, like, hate, it sells. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, that's what I'm talking about when I said that um, algorithms are people, right? I mean, we talk about the algorithm, you know, it, it sounds like a, a, a program, and yeah, there, there's, there's a program there, that's that's doling out impressions and views like that but it really is like people and the behavior of people now there is something to what rebecca's saying though and i've noticed it too right in that the algorithm is able to find certain groups of people and say if these people like your stream and sometimes i literally mean that like as in like like the stream right now hit that like button if you're uh if, if you're on youtube right but um you know if, if people are uh, watching and engaging with and, uh, you know, commenting on, etc., cetera, um, your stream, uh, YouTube will look at, at who they are, will look at their demographics, and they'll try to send your video out to more people like that. Now, this does well for right-wingers. This does well in terms of essentially creating communities of like-minded people when it comes to hate when it comes to prejudice, right? But it's not so good at putting together communities of like-minded people when it's like, you know, trans people, when it's like black people, when it's, um, you know, like, like, like it, it, it seems to have that bias. It seems like there's something in this, like, this sort of negativity bias, this, this outrage, um, marketing phenomenon that, that benefits the right more than it benefits the left and benefits hate more than it benefits marginalized people. So speaking against it and denouncing it, not so much, but hate definitely sells, especially when it's coming from the right. They will pay big bucks for that. They'll give you a seat at Fox, million dollar contracts to say nothing, trashy monologues, like literally dry monologues, ain't nothing on it. Nothing the person could be saying is true, but they will let- I mean, look at Greg Gutfeld, for instance, right? Right. And, and and they're giving How this information again, audience? another dangerous thing, whistleblowing to these people living in the west of nowhere. And now they're out again at the Capitol or they're carrying torches in the middle of the night. This is what we're seeing. But they're going to continue to pay these people platforms like we see like Twitter are going to continue to push their content first, allow their derogatory tweets to stay up. Meanwhile, somebody that may speak against it will have their page um, taken down or, or suspended. So yeah, moderation was one of the only tools that 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 kind of fought against this negativity bias, this, this um, you know, hate-based engagement bias that I was talking about. Um, YouTube implemented that after, you know, 2016 and, and the phenomenon of the radicalization through the alt-right pipeline started to emerge, right? Uh, Twitter fought that through essentially banning people that violate terms of service. And yeah, it turned out that, you know, it was mostly right wingers, right? So there was kind of a countervailing force there. Elon has come along and he's done his best to eliminate that, right? So now it's just a pure, um, you know, right wing bias that, that's going on in these algorithms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I mean, negative engagement farming has always been a phenomenon on Twitter. But now it's just so much more promoted and incentivized. Like you can get a bigger following and now potentially get paid depending on how terrible the thing that you tweet is. Like it's a race to the bottom. Like now you have yeah. people like just pearly things tweeting out women shouldn't vote. And then you have Leafy is here tweeting out I'm the Hitler of LGBTQ people. And so if you it, like these are. But I feel like Pearl has tweeted worse thing. Well, not tw necessarily tweeted, but Pearl has definitely done uh, 
more mask off content lately. People who they don't have talent, they're not intelligent, so they can't get attention any other way. So it's a very easy way to farm engagement. But now there's that monetary incentive. Now you get bolstered by the algorithm on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So it's creating this environment that is so toxic that people don't want to be on it. People don't want to see it. I mean, any mm -hmm. any single story that you see now, like news stories, whatever, all of the, the replies are going to be blue checks, usually Nazis, mm -hmm. all saying the most terrible things. And that's just what you see. And that's not like that's not. And good. I've noticed something that happens, at least for me on Twitter slash X, right, is that if I have a post and it's getting a lot of impressions, but those impressions are resulting in right wing comments, there's less people engaging with my post in order to engage with the content of my post. And, you know, there's more people engaging with it just to be hateful, right? When people see that thread and they click on the replies and they're, they're going to reply, but then they see like all these blue checks just being like super hateful, right? That That's why sometimes like when it comes to, you know, out and out hate, I will hide my replies. Not because like I, you know, I'm afraid of people seeing what's in the replies. I just, I want the, that that's not the engagement that I'm seeking, right? I'm not seeking, like it doesn't do me a lot of good to get engagement from the right where it's people that that aren't really you know there for me they're they're there for for hate right um and, it, and they're pushing away other people who might be interested in that post people will sort of like abandon a thread that's been taken over by hateful blue chuck marks for advertisers but people don't want to watch like look at this stuff i mean i haven't been using twitter as much and i used to be addicted to twitter admittedly and sadly <laughs> but now i just I, ha I have to force myself to not go there as much because it literally makes me depressed. Like seeing nonstop yeah. Nazis or explicit transphobia or like overt racism and slurs, <laughs> that, like it's not sustainable. It's so it's, yeah, it's sad. Yeah, people wake up. You mentioned pearly things because pearly things is such a good example of someone who is so remarkably mediocre, but is now famous yeah. just because like it's a woman saying that women are bad. Like if you just have a woman yeah. who's like, yeah, women mm -hmm. are shit. You know, they should be cooking and cleaning for men. Blah blah. Mm -hmm. blah. That's all it takes. You know. Well, that's that's yeah. that's what that's like a right wing influencer in its most pure form. Like we're, I mean, mm -hmm. not to get too esoteric or or whatever, but. We're in late stage capitalism. And so a lot of these um, modes of monetization of like thought <laughs> are are manifesting themselves in ways that are like uh, even more uh, uh, grotesque and more brazen. I just like in the sense that there have always there's always been a marketplace for a woman that's going to speak badly about women. Um, I mean, is Sargon still making YouTube uh, videos? Interesting question, right? Uh, Sargon really did have a drop off. He had he started a website called Lotus Eaters, and I will still see Lotus Eaters videos from time to time. I don't know if he changed his channel to be called Lotus Eaters, but he doesn't seem to have the same influence that he that he used to have. Some of these people have dropped off, right? Um, so some of these people aren't as influential as they once were, but they're they're always replaced by new hate mongers. Phyllis Schlafly is a great example of mm. a, a, a woman who was like a prominent figure who said that the woman's place is in the home and promoted <laughs> racist views and mm -hmm. patriarchal views. And like the, the market for that kind of hatred um, is always going to be larger because we're talking about markets. Uh, and that it's not a marketplace of ideas. It's a financial marketplace. And Twitter is now becoming that like Elon Musk is calling it X because that was his dream name for PayPal. He wants to turn it into some sort of banking system like a psycho because it's just the only way to really make money with social media at this point um, since it's so financial or it, it, we've gone to. a. And I mean, it seems like a real like uh, on the good side. Right. I don't think his everything app is, is going to work. I don't think that's going to be Twitter. Um, he's trying to make it a banking app and that that has worked. People have been able to create apps like that in countries where where like online banking hasn't really been established yet. So if they can get in before people people, you know, find places to do online banking, you know, that they've been able to successfully create that. But uh, in the US, at least, you know, you've seen where like things like Apple Pay or um, Google Wallet, um, they're not really taking over 
uh, online banking the way that some of these other apps are. So I don't think that Elon's going to be successful with this. <laughs> where it's like, you can't bring new users over. So yeah, just to say is like the, 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 the reason like to Rebecca's point that the, you, you can make money so quickly being a reactionary um, is because it is a market and like that serves capital and that serves like the patriarchy and it serves white supremacy and all those things are intertwined. So mm -hmm. it's always going to be more lucrative. I'm under no illusions that I'm going to make millions of dollars doing what I do. Right. Like, but for now it's what I do because I, I can take it for, uh, and I should be able to for the foreseeable future. And because yeah, people like the majority report are doing this because they, they, they want to, because they believe in what they're saying. Right. As opposed to somebody like Anna, you know, like TYT, who are, are clearly in it to try to maximize their their market share. And if they can't do it on the left, which, you know, seems like they're having declining uh declining returns, they're gonna they're gonna wheel around to the right and try to do it that way. I'm passionate about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um so I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure you all feel some somewhat similarly. Yeah. That's yeah. the only yeah. reason why I'm here. Like I, I say that all the time on my show. Child, if I could, I would flip so quick and start <laughs> talking Candace Owens points so I can literally live my life and be all right, right? Like, just yeah. I, I'm a, I would just just go right and just talk about everything under the sun that is negative and be negative to every com marginalized community as a marginalized person, right? A woman, a black person, and a, a, a product of immigrants. I'm, this is money right here for the right, but I'm so passionate about the things that I talk about, about what I do and about community and, um, you know, being an, al an ally uh, to marginalized groups and being a place where the voiceless have a voice. Now, we don't get paid much. We struggle. Um, but if you're passionate about something like, you know, that, that's what that's what I do. That's what I do it for. You can honestly. sleep at night. Yeah. I, I can sleep at night. I can exactly. get up in the morning and not feel bad about anything that I talked about, knowing that I did that with my heart. Um, and I can be myself. I feel you like a lot of them it. wear a mask. So um, let you know like before that outbreak mask. comes. Like they wear a mask. It's hot <laughs> underneath and they can't really, we don't know what they're really saying because they're, they're not speaking from their true selves, but it pays, it, it gives them a living. So sell your soul, 